What's up guys, how you all doing? Welcome to another video. Today we're discussing whether or not the Canon R7 is suitable for shooting sports. Can you shoot any sports with it at all? Is it suitable for pro level sports? Gonna try and answer those questions today. Before we get into it, gonna ask you guys to do all the usual YouTube stuff for me. Hit the like button, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, share the video with a friend, do all that usual youtuber stuff for me because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel and I really, really appreciate it. If you want to be seeing some images that have shot with the Canon R7, you might want to go follow me on Instagram at Rob Samble Sport. I'm sharing images all the time on there that I've shot at events and a lot of the events recently um, I've been shooting with this Canon R7. So go check out some images over there that I shot with the R7. When I post images that I shot with the R7, um, I will use hashtag R7 in the bottom of the image so you can tell it was shot with this camera. Right, let's get into it. Can you use the R7 to shoot sports? Well, I'm gonna do this in kind of a few different categories. I'm gonna talk about image quality, I'm gonna talk about autofocus, I'm gonna talk about the speed of the camera, and I'm gonna talk about low light performance. There's a few other little variables that were mentioned along the way, but those are the four main categories that we're gonna to touch on when we're deciding, is this camera good enough to shoot sports? So first of all, let's touch on image quality. Well, first of all, it's worth mentioning, of course, that the Canon R7 is a crop sensor camera, an APS-C camera. Now, what that means is that the sensor on it is smaller than a full frame camera. If you look in the front of it, for example, the, the little hole where the sensor is, is smaller than if you look inside a Canon R6, for example. Now, in a lot of cases, when you get a crop sensor camera, the actual sensor size in terms of megapixels is bigger. So for example, you have a 33 megapixel sensor with the Canon R7, whereas you only have a 20 megapixel sensor with the Canon R6. So a lot of people who don't fully understand cameras will think, well, then the image quality with the R7 must be a lot better. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that because with a crop sensor camera, you are by the very nature of the size of that sensor getting less light coming into it, which means in some situations it will struggle. However, one of the most important things to note straight away is that the image quality from the Canon R7 is really, really good. These new mirrorless cameras by Canon have got some fantastic sensors in them. And some of the images that have been coming out of this camera have been absolutely beautiful. I would say totally comparable with my Canon R6. In terms of the actual image quality, if you guys are shooting something like a 7D Mark II, uh, and we've got a whole video about that coming up, uh, probably the next video in this series, uh, you're gonna notice a big step up in image quality. If you're shooting with something like an R6 and then you look at images from this, you're not gonna be looking at it and thinking, oh God, it's, it's way worse. Some great cameras coming out of all of these mirrorless series from Canon and some really good image quality. So, so on the whole, the images are really, really good. Are they good enough to shoot sports? Yeah, 100% they are. Is the image quality good enough to shoot pro level sports? Yes, 100% it is. There are certain situations where you might struggle a little bit and we'll talk about that later in the video. So from there, we're gonna move into autofocus. Well, with this camera, the Canon R7, the autofocus is crazy, crazy good. First of all, um, with these mirrorless cameras now, you can basically move the autofocus point wherever you want to. So this camera has 651 available autofocus points. That's crazy. Basically with the joystick, you can decide which part of the image do you want to focus on. You also have all different focus modes. You can use some of the tracking modes, like the facial recognition, um, eye focus. It can use like animal detection, you can focus on areas, you can do the single point focus and you can move that wherever you want to. You can do the expanded single point focus. Uh, so it's crazy, crazy good. And the actual autofocus is fantastic. Now, in the previous video, I talked about the fact that I don't use the tracking modes for shooting sports. That's because you get so many situations and variables with players crossing over each other. But let's say you were shooting uh, one individual person or maybe somebody riding a horse or somebody on a cross country run or a vehicle, a motorbike or a car. 
In those situations, the tracking autofocus modes in this camera are incredible. You can start to focus if you use a combination of AI servo mode. With that subject, you can track it and it will just lock on and you can fire off your frames and you will be tracking really, really well. I found the autofocus with my R6 to be fantastic. And I've got to say the R7 is pretty much exactly the same. Certainly on a par with it. If you're happy with the autofocus in something like the R6, the R5, you're not going to be disappointed with the R7 at all. Autofocus, totally fine. Yes, it's good for sports. Yep, it's good for pro level sports. You're good to go in terms of autofocus. So what about the speed of the camera? Well, to shoot sports, uh, you certainly need a fast camera. You need something that if you set it into high frame mode is gonna capture you a load of images. Well, the good news is you can certainly do that with the Canon R7. If you wanted to shoot with the electronic shutter, you're looking at 30 frames per second. I mean, that's crazy fast. However, with a lot of sports, you probably won't be using that electronic shutter. It does work well for some sports. I've used it to shoot football and it's done okay. With some of the faster moving sports or even something like football, when you've got the ball moving fast, it does start to mess with images a little bit. So I would recommend the mechanical shutter. With the mechanical shutter, you're looking at 15 frames per second. So that's still crazy good, right? You know, if you go back a few years, something like the 72 had 10 frames per second. And we thought, whoa, that's crazy fast. So 15 frames per second, yeah. No problem at all. However, with some of the older Canon lenses, you're not going to quite reach the 15 frames per second, but you still get it pretty quick. I use this on my old uh, Canon 400mm f2.8, the original IS version, and I still was getting something like eight frames per second. So it's still pretty fast. You're not going to be struggling for the speed of the camera. So lastly, let's look at the ISO performance. Now, I've got a whole separate video coming on this, right? So so, so hold fire for, for that one. Um, but in terms of ISO performance, I would say that generally it's okay. The main test that I did on this was I shot some indoor sports. So what I'm going to be doing now is sharing a few images that I shot of basketball indoors and I'm putting the settings on the screen so you can see that these images were shot at ISO 6400. Now the image quality is pretty good, right? You guys who want to pixel peep, we're gonna be doing that in the next video, so don't worry. But for now, I'm just showing you edited images that are ready to go and for me to send out to the team. And I would say they're very good. They're very usable as 6,400. You might say, well, 6,400 isn't enough of a test. Okay, cool, no worries, I've got you guys. Here's an image that I shot with this camera at ISO 10,000. Here's another image that I shot with this camera at ISO 12,800. Those are high ISO levels. In my general life shooting sports, I'm never shooting at 12,800 ISO. If I'm under floodlights, I'm maybe hitting like 6,400 or 8,000. If I'm indoors, I'm around that same kind of level. And I think this camera will hold its own okay at that ISO level. So for me, the ISO is good. Is it good enough to shoot sports? Yeah, 100% it is. The slight caveat with this one is if you wanted to be shooting pro level sports, um, sometimes you're gonna be in some dark areas, dark arenas with very poor floodlights. With that in mind, you might decide that the image quality is kind of borderline. Is it as good as something like the Canon R6? It's not. So you might be tempted to go for something like that. Bearing in mind now, this camera new, you're looking at like 1,300 pounds, something like that. You could pick yourself up a used Canon R6 for about the same price. So bit of a decision to make there. You're not going to get a new R6 for that price. Um, and that's going to bring us on to the last point in just a second. So ISO performance is good. Is it good enough if you are focusing entirely on the best possible image quality you can get? It is not as good as something like the Canon R6 or of course the R5. Lastly though, just want to touch on that price point. So look, as I've said, you can get this camera for something in the region of £1,300 or like uh, 1250 something like that. For that price point, you are getting one heck of a sports camera. The specs that this has got for that budget are fantastic. So if you're out there, maybe you're a parent who wants to get some photos of your kids playing sports. Maybe you're somebody who just wants to take some photos of like your local sports team or maybe your own sports team. You want to get something for your social media that you could put on Instagram for the team that you play for. This camera for that money is outstanding and I would absolutely recommend it. I've been using this alongside my Canon R6 
and I've been shooting pro level sports with that combination. I'm still deciding whether or not I wanna go with two R6s or whether or not I'm gonna continue with an R6 and an R7. Of course, there's some advantages and disadvantages of both. One of the big things there to factor in, of course, is with a full frame and a crop sensor camera, you get different kind of magnification. I'm not gonna use the word reach because it isn't quite real reach. It's basically an image that's cropped in. But of course, what I mean is if you put this on a 400 mil lens, you're actually getting the equivalent of something like 600 mil. So th there is quite a, a difference. Uh, that maybe means that you could then get away with something like a 300 mil lens instead of a 400 mil lens. 300 mil lenses are an awful lot cheaper than a 400 mil lens. And that's where this camera starts to really become a strong, strong option for any of you guys who are shooting sports on a budget and we've talked about shooting sports on a budget a lot on this channel and if someone said to me right now rob is a 300 mil lens on a canon r7 good to shoot sports i would say yeah 100 percent you'll be able to shoot so many good images with that you don't need to stretch your budget any higher now look, this video could go on for an hour talking about this subject. So if you've got specific questions, maybe stick them in the comments below. But hopefully I've given you a pretty good idea on whether or not the Canon R7 is going to be any good for shooting sports. I've shared some images with you that you can have a look at. Check me out on Instagram if you want to follow some more. We've got more videos in this series coming. Don't worry, we're testing those ISO levels. We're going to be comparing this with the 7D Mark II. We've got some other cool R7 videos still to come. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video.